Hello guys, we will be talking about probability today. Uh, there are eight counters in a bag. There is a number on each counter. And these are the numbers. Okay, a mixture of um, even and odd numbers. Fiona takes at random three of the counters. She adds the numbers on the three counters to get her total. Work out the probability that her total is an odd number. Now, the use of tree in this case would be okay. But I want us to try this without the tree because with the tree you have so many branches. There will be a second part to this question. Um, there will be a second part where you will see when you use the tree, it's um, it makes sense because you don't have too many branches. Uh, that will come after this video. I'll do another question on that. But for this one, we want to try it without the tree. This question is approximately four marks, as you can. Let me show you. It's approximately four marks. So you're expected to spend roughly about four minutes on it. Uh, but because I'll be explaining as I go, I will be spending more than four minutes. So the probability of getting an odd number uh, if the counter is picked as it stands right now is five out of eight for odd. And for even numbers, it will be three out of eight. So we know that. But what are the combinations we can have to make sure that those three counters um, that Fiona picks are uh, or picked are uh, odd when we add them together? So the combinations to get odd will be um, odd, odd, odd. As in 1 plus 1 plus 5, for example, will give you a total of 7, which is odd. Another way we could have odd number is even odd even like two plus one plus two will give you know five which is odd another way we could have it is um odd even even and we could also have um even even odd okay so for odd 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 if we pick uh, the first counter it will be five out of eight for the probability of an odd and because we've picked one we'll have four uh, uh, Chances left out of seven and we'll pick that one. We'll have six left six counters left and we have three chances All right for the even one right now. We have three out of eight when we try to do the probability of picking one of the counters and The odd still stays as five, but because we've already picked one from the counter. We have seven left and then, we, because we've had that probability, we have six left now, six counters left. And for the even, because we've already had a probability fit before, it becomes a two on there. And then for the third combination, odd will be five out of eight. And because we've done that probability, we have seven counters left, but the even probability will be three. And of course, because we've picked out the second probability, we have six counters left and the even this time will be two. And then for this last one here, um, the even will be 3 out of 8 for the first probability. And the second probability for even will be 2 out of 7 because we would have 7 counters left. And of course the odd still stays as 5 but it will then be out of 6 this time around. Okay. Now because of this type of uh, probability you have to multiply all these numbers true and then add them up together to get the answer to the question um if you look at this calculation we have three two five eight seven six three two five eight seven six three two five eight seven six so these three here are the same okay sorry about that uh the diagram so we can basically just write three over eight times five over seven times two over six and triple that all of them times three okay and then add it to whatever we get for the odd 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 which is uh five over eight times four over seven times three over six or half so we'll just write three over six now, if you put this on your calculator, you should get uh, 25 over uh, 56. Okay, if you put that, point that on a calculator, you should get that.
Now, the second part I wanted us to talk about where I said we could use a tree is um, dealing with a, with a coin, for example. So, say we have this sort of question here. So, this question says, uh, it says, find the probability of getting um, two heads, B, at least two heads, C, three heads, at most two heads, and that's when a coin is thrown three times. Now, because this is kind of straightforward, the answer is there already anyway, but I'll show you how we got that. Now, when you throw the coin, the first throw, let's put that there, first throw. So when you throw the coin or toss the coin, the, prob uh, the possibilities you can have is your head or your, your tail. Let's put that there. Yeah. Now, if your coin landed on head when you had the first throw, your second throw then, you could have head or tail as well for your second throw if it had landed on head. Now, if that second throw, you, the coin had landed on head, your third throw would then be having head or tail as well. However, if your second throw had landed on tail and you throw your third throw, you could have head or tail for your third throw. Now, in your first throw, if the coin had landed on tail, your second throw from the tail could be head or tail. And of course, if your second throw had landed on head, your third throw on there will be head or tail. And of course, if your second throw had landed on tail, your third throw could be head or tail. So in this case, you can clearly see that we don't have too many branches, so it makes sense to use the tree diagram really. So the combinations we have here is H, 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 as in head, head, head. And the next combination is head, head, tail. So we have head, head, tail. And the next is head, tail, head. And the next is head, tail, tail. And for the bottom bit here, we've got tail, head, head, tail, head, tail, 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 head, and tail, tail, tail. So the question was, uh, the probability of getting two heads for A. So if we write A here, probability of getting two heads will be, we've got one, two, three, and so probability of getting two heads out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight combinations, okay? And then for B, the probability of getting at least two heads. So probability of getting at least two heads will be you knowing that at least would mean it could be three heads or it could be two heads okay you must understand this is where um probability gets confusing so at least two heads would mean three heads or two heads so we've got three heads here we've got two heads here two heads here two heads here so that's one two three four four possibilities out of the eight combinations you could reduce that to half if you want. Then for C, which has already been done, it says three heads. The probability of getting three heads, obviously, is just one out of the eight combinations. And then for D, it says the probability of getting at most two heads. So if we write probability at most two heads, at most two heads would mean uh, a one head or two heads yeah so here we have two heads so if I circle that bit we have two heads 
we have one head, we have two heads, we have one head, we have one head. So that's six combinations. So at most two heads will be six out of eight possibilities. All right. And you can reduce that as well if you want. So the tree makes sense um, in this question, as you can clearly see, if I just take that up a bit for you. Um, yeah, it makes sense here to get uh, uh, a tree diagram done for this. But for the other question, you can do it without a tree. Uh, but if you must use a tree, that's fine. I hope that has helped and uh, have a lovely day. Bye-bye. <laughs>